Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing the perks of being a wallflower. It's my tragic last day of a free trial on Amazon Prime, so I wanted to find one more movie on here. This was on the free with ads section. I'm sure you can watch this in a bunch of places. You know how we do it. First and foremost, absolutely no one's going to watch this. My constitutional rights are violated, so I'm putting out as much content as I can. Violating my constitutional rights has destroyed my businesses, and just keep trying. But there's no rules, so we'll do another movie. But you know what we do? I will give you the overview of logistics about the movie, overall impressions and grade. Once I have given the grade, you're going to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot, synopsis, and character development, and any similar movies or major themes that come to mind. So we have socially awkward teen Charlie, Logan Learman, is a wallflower, always watching life from the sidelines until two charismatic students become his mentors. Free-spirited Sam, played by Emma Watson, and her stepbrother Patrick, Ezra Miller, help Charlie discover the joys of friendship, first love, music, and more, while a teacher sparks Charlie's dreams of becoming a writer. However, his new friends prepare to leave for college. Charlie's inner sadness threatens to th shatter his newfound confidence. So you gotta watch it on Prime Video. Google says why to watch a touching and emotional coming-of-age story about a shy teenager who finds his voice. You got 4.7 out of 5 on Amazon. 85% on Rotten Tomatoes, 7.9 out of 10 on IMBD. Yeah, I agree with what Google said. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good coming of age story. Just high schoolers. So I don't know, misfits, outcasts, high school story. I thought the relationship was strong. I thought the plot moved along well. I thought the tone and cinematography was well done. So again, I've seen this one before. I didn't really remember it all that well, but. On the second time through, I probably would have given it a B plus, but I remember liking it more the first time, I mean, just not knowing anything about the story. So I'm gonna give it a day minus. I thought this was a good one. So overall, I recommend this one. I think it's I think it's a good coming of age story. I thought it was interesting. I thought the plot synopsis was good, and the character development was pretty intriguing or entertaining. So overall, A minus. If you've not seen this movie, I recommend you do so. So now we'll turn off the video. If you do want to watch it, there will be spoiler alerts. So you open up like yes, like it said. You meet Charlie, he's kind of this like shy, going to be a freshman uh, high school. You know, there, there's some narration into the actual production. He's narrating it. And so he's, he's writing letters to his friend, which you learn pretty early on what happened to him. And, um, you know, he's getting prepared for, he's got a mom, a dad, um, his sister Candace, and a brother Craig, I believe. I'm not sure if Craig was the brother. He's got an older brother who's at college, plays football. And, um, he's writing a letter, letters to his uh, to his ex best friend or to this best friend that you learn to what happens, what happened to him, and so I don't I forget how he how he meets, but he so he goes. What's the, what's the opening scenes of the movie? Well, he goes to again he goes to high school. He gets picked. I mean, a couple scenes of him get, being the freshman, getting his book torn up or whatever. And then he goes to a football game. Um, he meets Patrick. Patrick is the, so he's got a shop class and freshman woodworking, and Patrick is a senior, and he is uh, in his woodworking class, and he's making, he, he draws on a, the goatee that the teacher has, and it's kind of like imitating him in a playful way. And so Charlie recognizes Patrick from shop class at the football game, and goes up and um, basically Patrick is a very friendly dude, and invites um, Charlie to come over and sit with him. So he does so, you know, they're like, hey, you're my shop class, you know, just getting to know each other. And then um, uh, you meet Sam, you get the Emma Watson character, she comes over, and they go out after, they go to a, they, several regular scenes at this, the, this uh, diner they go to, I think it's called King's. But they go there, um, they're you know, just getting to know each other, Charlie's like, you know, you guys are a cute couple, how long have you been together? And um, they, you know, uh, Sam and Patrick are stepbrother and stepsister. I think Sam's mom married uh, Patrick's dad. And so after the, you know, they have a little diner scene. After that, they go to a party. And so at the first party, in a couple minor characters, somebody gives Charlie a weed brownie. And so he gets really stoned. Um, he's telling funny stories. Everyone's liking him. Um, and then he really wants a milkshake. And so Emma Watson, the Sam character, goes to make him a milkshake. And she was like, um, Something in a very casual way. I thought the, I thought the presentation was done well, but somehow Charlie's friend come up comes up about who he's writing to, 
when Sammy's there, like, look, where's, where's your friend at today? And he very casually just like, he shot himself last year. So pretty somber scene for Sam. Um, and they realize that stoned out Charlie doesn't have any friends. And so once he comes back from the bathroom, they all, Patrick has a toast. Sam tells Patrick what Charlie said. And Patrick has a toast and welcomes Charlie into their, um, into their misfit outfit, uh, misfit outcast friend group. So Charlie is now in with the friends. And so he learned pretty quickly early on that Patrick is gay. He's, he's uh, had to like sneak around or run around. Um, uh, uh, he's, he's dating, he's dating the uh, football player named Brad and Brad's dad would uh, beat him up really bad if he was a homosexual. So Patrick and Brad's uh, relationship has to be kind of like behind closed doors and then you kind of get an overview of the entire friend group. So that's Patrick and Brad's relationship. Then you meet Mary Elizabeth who is kind of bossy, um, tells people what to do. It kind of seems like the mom character of the group. Um, you meet a couple scenes of uh, Candace, uh, Charlie's sister, who's not really in his friend group, but her boyfriend, Ponytail Derek, who's not too, uh, not too bright. And Charlie comes home and sees um, Ponytail Derek slap Candace one time pretty early on in the movie. And he's like, you know, what, Candace, what are you doing? And she's like, I can handle him and whatnot. And so Mary Elizabeth's in the friend group. That's the, that's the family relationship. Um, you have, uh, is Alice? Who is Alice? Yeah, Alice is this, like the blonde chick, I believe, and she just likes to steal jeans, even though her family's wealthy. Um, they go to drag shows like, two or three times in the movie. Um, the like the, the friend group participates participates in drag shows, and so a couple scenes of that. Um, and then you also have a minor character, which I guess uh, this movie came out way before uh, Ozark, but who's the, the blonde chick from Ozark? Julia Gardner. She's in this movie as a minor character. She plays Susan. And so, like, when Charlie first goes to school, his brother played football, so he kind of knew. I think, I think Charlie did know Brad, like, as the football player before he knew Brad as uh, Patrick's, like, hidden boyfriend. But when he first goes to school, he's like, you know, I know this guy. I kind of know Susan from grade school. She won't talk to me much anymore. And, you know, I don't have any friends. So just kind of some background in the Julia Gardner characters in this one. And so that's kind of you just get an overview of the friend group, what's going on with the relationships and, the, and their backgrounds. And then, um, uh, I don't know, I don't know when, Charlie, Charlie very quickly has a crush on Sam. Um, Sam likes this other dude. I think, I think that, that actually, Sam might like Craig. I, I just don't know, I don't know who's, uh, what character Charlie's older brother's name is from the character list. So I think, I think the, the girl, the guy that Sam likes who's in college, his name's Craig. Yeah, sounds right. So I don't know who the older brother is, but he's got an older brother. My, minor character regardless. And so they just do friend stuff. They drive the first night that Charlie's welcomed. They just drive in the truck and go under the bridge and listen to the song. You know, just free spirited kind of tone thing. Um, and then the next kind of thing that happens is uh, after one of the the, the drag shows, um, like the next day at school, uh, Mary Elizabeth asks Charlie to go to the Sadie's Hawkins dance with her. So he goes with her. They have a nice date. They go back to her place after. They make out a little bit. He gets kind of bored of touching her boobs. It's literally what he says in the movie. But, but regardless, after that night, Mary Elizabeth assumes Charlie's uh, her boyfriend. And so, very quickly, Charlie's not into it, even on like the first date. And they've been good friends, and you know, Charlie's super appreciative of being accepted into the friend group. Not really too sure about Mary Elizabeth, um, but he goes along with the relationship for whatever. Um, for, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. And so you have a couple scenes of them going to school, or her, her just like always being around him, and he's not definitely not into it too much, and calling him after school. And his parents are like, you just break up with her. I need to use the phone. He like puts the phone down, goes downstairs, talks to his parents, goes back up, and she's just still talking to herself on the phone. And so the next kind of big development for that is they have a secret Santa with all of the friends. Um, and, or, or they put, yeah, they, they, have, they have secret Santa, and then... I don't know if Secret Santa's before or after, but they have a Secret Santa episode or scene where they're all, they all get um, good presents. They all really like Charlie. Can't remember if this is before or after. I think this is, I think this is um, before the, uh, the breakup with Mary Elizabeth. Regardless, they're hanging out one night and they're playing Truth or Dare. A little more narration from Charlie. is like, you know, I needed to break up with Mary Elizabeth, but I chose to do it in the worst possible way ever. And so they're playing Truth or Dare. And there's a little cut scene where it's like, 
you know, Charlie says truth, and he's like, and Patrick's like, you know, who, how's your first relationship going? And he's just like, you know, I, I can't wait till one of us dies. This is terrible. It's just like a, you know, a fictitious, that's what he's thinking in his brain scene. And then he chooses Dare, and Patrick says, you know, kiss the most uh, pretty girl in the room, and he turns and kisses Sam. So Mary Elizabeth isn't too happy. The whole friend group is kind of like, wow, Charlie, what a great, what a great friend you turned out to be. And so he kind of gets kicked out or ostracized from the friend group again from there. He was writing to his friends saying he's sad again. Um, and uh, he's calling the friends for a little bit, but he hasn't seen him in two or three weeks now. And then you get some more background that during that time, Brad's dad had found him and Patrick making out or doing stuff in the basement. And they come into school, he's got uh, uh, Brad's beat up pretty bad. Um, and they're all, they're all still, you know, Brad's still in the closet. Patrick is still, you know, um, outside, you know, wondering why Brad won't, you know, acknowledge him or whatever. And then, regardless, one of the days after this big breakup you find, or, or this, the, when Brad got beaten by his dad, when the, he's, uh, Patrick is walking through school, either Brad trips him or one of his football friends trip him, and Patrick is like, you know, aren't you going to stand up for me? And uh, Brad is just like, you know, get out of here, you faggot. And uh, so Patrick punches Brad, and then a bunch of the football guys jump Patrick, and then the scene kind of blacks out, and then you, you know come back to the scene, and Charlie Charlie had you know jumped in and done some damage or something, and tells them if he touches his friends again, he's going to blind them. And so they get to the, they go to the principal's office, quick scene, but regardless, that is the resolution too. Now that Charlie is back in the friend group, and so Sam is very happy that she Charlie was there for her, her brother. Um, and now Patrick is kind of, Patrick's relationship is now now over, and he's he's kind of dwindling or, or you know spiraling a little bit, just trying to you know get over a breakup. And so one night he tries to put the moves on Charlie. Charlie's definitely not feeling it, and so you know Patrick's just lost or just sad about his breakup. So that's a characterization development that happens in about seventy five percent through the movie. And regardless, they're all getting ready to go to college. That's kind of how Sam and Charlie first start to go, you know, just like hang out as Charlie helps Sam with her SATs. And uh, Charlie has a relationship with uh, Dr. Burton, or no, Mr. Anderson, who's a well-known guy, what's his name? Paul Rudd. So Paul Rudd is the English teacher, you know, giving him books and encouraging him to be a writer, um, you know, stuff like that. And so after that, they become friends again, they get accepted back into the group, um, and now they're kind of, you know, getting ready to get their college decisions. And so, um, Mary Elizabeth gets into Harvard, Sam, who's really, really trying hard to get into uh, Penn State main campus, she gets a letter and she gets in, um, I don't know if you really get any future on Patrick, uh, Candace, his sister, breaks up with Ponytail Derek, they go to prom, they do, a, they do an after prom, I think, I don't know, <laughs> but that's what happens, but regardless, um, they're now packing up to go to college, Charlie and Sam, you know, are back on good terms. And Sam is like, you know, Charlie, why didn't you ever ask me out? And Charlie's like, well, I didn't know if you wanted that, blah, blah, blah. Then they, they share a passionate kiss. Charlie goes in, and now they're kind of having, you know, this, this disparaging of, like, we're kind of both, you know, now fully committed to liking each other, but you're going away to college tomorrow. And so that's what happens. The next day they go off to college. Uh, Sam kisses Charlie one more time. Um, and then they, they head on off. I think Patrick is going to uh, uh, Penn State too. Doesn't matter. Regardless, they go off to college, and now Charlie is kind of spiraling again because he doesn't have um, he doesn't have his friends. He's typing to his dead friend again. But also, you, you have also other like minor scenes where, um, well, I guess in the intimate scene where Sam tells uh, and Sam and Charlie kiss. Um, Sam is like you know one was or. Charlie, this might even be before, but Charlie asked Sam what about her when her first kiss was. Yeah, this was earlier in the movie because this is before dating Mary Elizabeth. But Sam is like, you know, it was when I was eleven. It was my dad's coworker. Like I got sexually abused, and so Charlie has not kissed anybody. And Sam is like, you know, well, I want your first kiss to be someone that loves you. And this is this is earlier on in the movie. And then the next scene is when right before they're going to college. Then they go to college. And then once Charlie starts spiraling, you also get more backstory about like his because he, it's definitely clear he's like mental health or is instable or immature to some extent or something. And it's a fourteen-year-old character, but you're not really sure why. You keep having these flashback scenes with his aunt, um, 
who is the M Melanie Linsky, who plays uh, Rose on Two and a Half Men, which is the biggest role I remember her from. And um, you you learn you get these flashback scenes where he, like he's like it seems like he's fond of his aunt, and then you realize that she 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 was killed in a car accident and that she was sexually abusing him. And that it, they keep saying it's going to be our little secret because Charlie says something Charlie says something to Sam to the effect of like you know we have the same type of background in terms of abuse, and so. Then, then you get the, the, the direct acknowledgement of that's, that's what's happened. Um, so Charlie calls Candace, who's uh, you know a senior, and, and she's also going off to college. And again, the older brother's a very minor character. And Charlie's kind of like spiraling. And Candace is like, "Call the cops!" And they send him to my brother's house. And so then you get the you get the full backstory of what happens. He goes to a mental institute, um, spends some time in there, and I guess his parents hadn't hadn't learned um, about the abuse of his, of the aunt. And so, after some time, he comes back home, he's eating dinner with the family, and then Patrick and Sam come back from college after about two months. And so, they meet back up, um, you know, they just go for a ride, Sam has found the, the song that they really liked when they first drove through this tunnel at the beginning of the movie, and so they just go drive and enjoy the night. And Sam and Charlie's kind of like the freed character now, and he's standing it like they're driving it through a tunnel, and they have a pickup truck, and they're like standing up in the back, you know, just free willy living it. And uh, so Charlie does that, and then uh, Sam comes out and kisses him again. So you don't want to get, and that's really the uh, the resolution of the movie. And he's just like, you know, we're living for today, we're living now, and you know, you don't really get any indication if the relationship's going to work out. If Sam's going to go back to college and get railed out by fifteen frat dudes. But they're living for their hero now, and it's the Sam and Charlie relationship kind of worked out. Patrick's on better standards by the end of the movie, and that's really the resolution. So you know, overall, just a high school high school story about getting a girl. I mean, come on, who doesn't like, who doesn't like that one? But overall, I thought it was I thought it was a good coming of age story. It's a good switch up from crime dramas. Um, similar movies, not really major themes. I don't know mental abuse. But see, that's, that's, that's a major theme. It's those frill, fucking freak show hospitals, which again, mental illness is completely fraudulent. It's a state of awareness. Um, and, but then regardless, it's like, in the, in the scene, he's like the doctor, uh, Dr. Burton is like, you know, you said something in your sleep about your aunt, um, Charlie. You need, you need to, you know, face what has occurred to you. Where in my life, which again, I have the only trauma in my life is where's my money? And then my parents are like, you need to go to this crazy institute. And it's just like, no, see the point of trauma is you have to acknowledge that it existed. But my parents can acknowledge that they did that shit to me. And nothing sexual, but just denying my educational needs so profoundly. And now as an adult, my, my reputation is slandered to the point where I can't pay my bills. And they're like, well, go pay your bills. Go figure it out. It's like, I don't have access to the Constitution of the United States of America. I can't figure anything out. But 50 different fucking people approach me unsolicited at my apartment being like, you're good at science. So, uh, see, ball, at the snowballs, uh, vibration and noise and stuff. And then after two fucking words, you guys can't carry on a derivation. And it's like, yeah, I'm the weird guy. No, again, my presence is intimidating. My voice is loud. That scares people. And then when I get angry as a normal human emotion, oh my gosh, Brad, you're threatening us. My entire life. Every two days, two weeks, and two months. So, and mental illness is completely fraudulent. But, again, I'm already canceled. So, but again, I'm a scientist proving everything. And it's all proven. So, again, just like... The average person that works at Costco has never done algebra, let alone proven the fundamental theorem of algebra. There's just proven mathematics on the internet that has a ton of biological implications, and you guys just can't accept facts. So, that's good stuff there. Again, overall major themes, I just thought it was a, it was a fun high school coming of age story, and you get the cute girl at the end. So, that's the biggest thing for me. I always liked those stories, and I thought it was fun. I thought the cinematography was well done. Plot moved along well. There was some nuance to it that I didn't see coming, especially the first time watching the movie. And... Yeah, about the character, no, no really off-putting characterizations. And so that is my review of the perks of being a wallflower. So I will see you on the next one if there is one.